Hello and welcome. I'm Stephen Dickens and I'm joined by my host, Mike Vizard. We're coming to you from BMC Connect and this is a 6.5 on the road. We're joined by Anthony and my dear friend, Dave Jeffries. Hey guys, welcome to the show. So let's get started. Tell the viewers and listeners a little bit about what you do for BMC. So I'm uh, responsible for really all the aspects of R&D. Um, whether it's the, the products that we've had for a number of years or whether it's late and breaking Amy Platform, Amy Assistant, it's a fantastic place to be. So we, we just drive innovation, and that's uh, it's my team worldwide that do that. That's not a bad way to describe your job, Dave, driving innovation. Anthony, you? So I'm an architect for Amy Platform and Amy Assistant and an AI evangelist. Uh, go out and talk to many customers is, about is what we're doing. Is that a new cool job title yes, for this year? Yes, that just appended right on to my uh, title. <laughs> Fantastic. So you took us there, guys, in your introductions with Generative AI. We're here at Connect this week, just come off the keynotes, lots of focus on Generative AI assistance. Kind of where are you seeing that kind of fit within the DevOps and the sort of space? I'll go to you first, Dave. All right. So I, I, we've done some fantastic announcements today, mm -hmm. all right? And, and if you haven't seen them, it's all about Amy Assistant, Amy Platform, and bringing generative AI to where we think it's needed the most. Mm -hmm. And obviously, a lot of people talk about skills gaps and skills attrition on, on the mainframe. Um, but you have to think, you know, why, why is that an issue? Why is, is a skills challenge an issue on the mainframe? Because surely, you know, it's going the way of the dodo maybe or something like that well in reality it's completely the opposite the mainframe's got an entirely new lease of life and those skills are probably an inhibitor or the lack of those skills are an inhibitor to transformation people want the mainframe to do some new cool stuff because it's got fantastic new technology in there and we think generative ai is is providing really that key to unlock what applications do. So therefore, you know, reducing the risk of changing those applications, what your systems do, how your systems interoperate, et cetera. And it's allowing you to, to unleash transformation, which is bringing you know, a whole new realm of possibilities to the platform and, and how the platform can support business. Bringing new people into the platform, yeah. enabling them to get started faster. Yeah, and it's making, I think the guys who are already there, guys and gals are already there, helping them as well to, to innovate because sometimes, you know, you might be the last one there and you might be struggling in terms of, you know, the, the scale of the, of the challenge in front of you. You need some help to go do it. And I think it's not just unleashing the next generation of talent, it's unleashing the talent that already exists, which is yeah, important. Exactly. You touch the customers a lot. Yes. What are some of the examples that people are actually using here? Because I think we talk a lot of theory with AI. But, you know, what are we actually seeing? Where is, where is the manual effort and the scut work disappearing? Yeah, so um, it, that's a really good, interesting question. So from different customers, it means different things to them. So a lot of them, it's uh, capturing that tribal knowledge. Let, let's just start there. So before they even go down the road of you know, AI or generative AI, they have to take that step back and see what does it mean to their business. And if you just look at some of the tooling that's out there today, currently, when it comes to generative AI, it's very agnostic, right? It really doesn't mean anything specifically to a customer and their wants and their needs. So the first thing that we had to do is take a step back and say, well, how do we infuse our generative AI with the knowledge from a customer's environment, first of all, to make that AI relevant to them to address their wants, their needs, their business direction? Because that's where, you know, I think you use the word skunk works when it comes to that. Well, how do we make it a reality? How do we make it relevant for the customers? So we built our platform of generative AI services in a way that it's open and customers can infuse it with knowledge that they need and then start applying it to things in the DevOps space, in the uh, AI ops space, specifically around uh, you know, what they're trying to get out of uh, improvements in their, in their business with the generative AI, making it relevant in context for them. So I can customize it and it meets me where I am versus me exactly. being forced to do something. That's right. So you don't want to ever leave your experience, your environment, your tooling to jump out into another you know, platform or another tooling because that's where you lose what we call context and the relevance of what it means to you. So we like to say we meet the customers where they are in our product experiences with that context, with the understanding, and you get far more out of generative AI and much better results that are, again, relevant for you and your business as you move forward. So, Dave, key word there from Anthony was spe specific, making this specific for the particular shop, the operators, yeah. the developers. Can you just 
kind of double click on that as a phrase and what that means from a specificity, you know, contextualize it. What am I going to be actually doing with Amy Assistant <clears throat> or some of the AI, AI op stuff? Right. And, and how that's going to work. So I think one of the key aspects of all this is, and, and everybody's, you know, they've approached generative AI. There's, there's a world and a plethora of LLMs out there, large mm-hmm. language models. And we're we're starting to see some language models being really good at certain things in certain areas. Some are good at code, some are good at other things, et cetera. So as Anthony was talking about, you know, one of our kind of think core traits that we bring to the, to the platform and to our solution is allow you to take the right LLM for the right use and then obviously infusing it with your own information. So that's how you get in that specificity. Oh, absolutely. And then you can apply it to the code world. Yeah. We talk a lot about generative AI in code, in terms of understanding code, but there's more than just code that runs the business. There's the infrastructure, there's the configuration, there's the environment. And so not just applying generative AI to understanding what a COBOL application does or what an assembler application does, but what does the Rex do? What does the JCL do? Mm -hmm. What does... um, what does the you know the the expert back at base do in terms of how he resolves a particular situation that may appear in operations? Exactly. So, bringing that subject matter expert to a wide variety of areas involves multiple kind of tribal knowledge pockets being pulled together, multiple LLMs being able to be used for the right reason and the right purpose at the right time. I think explaining code is great because a lot of folks, they didn't document it in the first place, yeah. so they don't really know how it works. But how do we go to the next level? Because I think what we're moving now towards is real-time insights that are going to be surfaced as I'm trying to perform a task. And yes. yep. So we're on this journey, but it seems like there's multiple phases. What are they? There is. So uh, the way we're looking at the spectrum right now and... You know, we started off in the area of what we all started to experience, like with chat GPT, right? It was the chat experience. So we go out there, we, we dump, dump questions over, right? Uh, how to, what is, how can I type questions to chat GPT? That's how we all started. So we also started that way with infusion within our products where it made sense. But the spectrum now, we're looking much wider, much far beyond just a chat experience moving to, towards something called agentics or agentic AI or AI agents. And what we want to do there is really move towards more autonomy with our generative AI solutions, but also the point of hyper-focusing in our particular product areas with AI agents to be super experienced, super knowledgeable, super capable within a given product area like AI ops, sec ops, to do things like... Uh, the automation, let's just take automation for, we have a lot of mundane tasks that we deal with day in and day out, right? If, even if you look at us individually, uh, there's a lot we can start looking at for generative AI in our own lives to simplify things, Never mind in the business world. So we have these AI agents now that are focused in our product areas to allow customers to automate mundane tasks, to surface insights automatically. What do we really want to do here? It's not that we want to make, uh, we, want to, we want to take the cognitive load off folks with generative AI, because we want them to focus on more important business issues. We want them to focus on innovation. They want to innovate just as much as we do. So how much can we help them with utilizing generative AI to push them to that journey? Anthony, I think you said it well. We want them to focus on the good stuff, exactly. focus less on the operation stuff. What a great way to wrap. You've been watching us here on the 6.5, coming to you live from Connect with BMC. I've been your host, Stephen Nickens, joined as always by my dear friend, Mike Vizard. Please click and subscribe and check out the other episodes, and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.